In a perfect world, a SOC analyst like me would spend the day researching ways actors are actively seeking to breach the defenses in my organization. Unfortunately, I still spend much of my time researching alerts of various potential threats. Anomaly helps me maximize my time by automating a significant amount of my research. I used to start my day by reading several blogs to keep up to date on the latest attacks and TTPs used by actors who are targeting my industry. Instead, today, I log into the Anomaly platform to see what's happening in my network. By utilizing threat models, I can quickly visualize how these latest news events are affecting my company. By selecting Filter, I can easily pivot into threat bulletins, actors, attack patterns, campaigns, TTPs, and vulnerabilities. Threat bulletins provide a quick view of current published events and where my company has been targeted. On the left, I get a feel for the overall magnitude of what's happening in the system. For example, I see that we're consuming 154 events per second. On the right, I can see how our events are matching with observables both inbound and outbound. This tells us what's trending both in inbound matches and activity. We use intelligence to power high fidelity signals and create these matches. Since I've done my homework in researching global trends, I'd like to compare that to what's happening in my own environment. I'm seeing a lot of hafnium in my environment. That's pretty typical for us. On the right side, I see the top 20 impacted hosts that are sorted by risk score. The risk score is informed by indicators of attack and indicators of compromise, as well as criticality of the asset and other risk exposure information. I'll come back to this in a bit. As I scroll down, I get a view of the most common threat type matches in my environment. In this case, they're command and control domain threats. I can also get an indication out of which countries these threats are originating. Right now, we're seeing a lot out of Germany, followed by Singapore and Russia. Now, all of this is trending information from the last seven days. I can change the look back period at the top and see the trending over various periods of time. Going back to the data, let's take a look at the top impacted host. It looks like it's got a risk score of about 85, which is significantly higher than the others. Here we see a view of the events that correspond to this specific indicator and asset. In this case, our SharePoint server is reaching out to api.rogerscorp.org. This indicator has high severity and high confidence. Let's take a closer look. Here we see indicator matches in the logs over the past seven days. We can change the view to the last five years and see that the first appearance of this indicator in our logs was in January of 2022. Let's select one of these and begin an investigation. By running this investigation, we include the totality of evidence for the detected threat across all time. We'll give it a name and I'll assign myself as the owner. The investigation currently only contains the indicator that we identified in our logs. Now, before I go further, I want to prevent any further damage that might be taking place in my network. So I'm going to pull up this indicator and mark it with a tag that will send it to my firewall. I'll quickly show you that there is a rule matching this tag and it's sent to my Palo Alto firewall. And that's going to block the outbound traffic to this malicious domain. Now, going back to our investigation, the power in an investigation is the associations we can immediately pull together to get a better understanding of what actors might be in our environment and what they might be after. Let's right click on the indicator to find all the associations. ThreatStream has found three actors associated with this malicious domain, 46 threat bulletins, and 50 attack patterns. To see how these attack patterns map to the MITRE attack framework, we can just click to show the threat models. We've previously input our own security coverage into ThreatStream, allowing us to overlay our security coverage against this threat model and help us prioritize areas of our security controls that need additional work or focus. We also have a workbench that allows us to collaborate on these investigations. I can add free form notes into the description, add relevant attachments that might include log snippets, and assign tasks. In this case, we need to do a little bit more research on this to share with the team. So I'm going to create a task. We can assign it to work groups or individuals. I'll be nice and assign it to myself. There are three actors associated with this malicious domain. I'm going to do a little more research to see if there's any evidence of them elsewhere in our network. Finally, I'm going to create an incident with our ticketing system to make sure everyone is aware and to log our actions. When we finish the investigation, we'll export a threat model to share with other teams and our industry partners. I think that was five minutes well spent. I'm planning to do some research now and work on strengthening our security controls where we found some gaps in this investigation. 
And I actually have time to work on it now that Anomaly did the heavy lifting for me.